And now we're going to hear from Rodrigo Costa of DTASC. Uh, morning. Morning. Uh, before I start here, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for uh, over here to bring me here. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, the task. Uh, we are creating a new methodology to help companies to achieve goals on time, especially when people work remotely. And why we are doing it? Because not delivered on time costs a lot for the business. Okay. According to Forbes uh, study, more than 70% of the projects are not being delivered on time. And as a consequence, you start to lose your talents in your company. And that can cost three to four X the salary. Uh, just think for a little uh, moment right now. What happened tomorrow if everyone who works with you or for you leave your company? Are you able to handle your company by yourself? It's difficult, right? That's why we depend on people to achieve our goals. And we must recognize their talents, okay? And that's why we created the task. We want to increase the employee commitment for what they are doing Know, and recognize them for their hard work. Okay, this allows us to create goals for someone and add incentives for them to deliver things for your time. And they accumulate tokens when that happens. And what happens when they accumulate those tokens? We have to understand what they need to keep working, what they need to keep them. You know, creating a delivery things to you. Some companies are say each token you accumulate, you can change for one dollar. Some employees say, I don't want the money, I just want a day off. You know, and I want to work hard to deliver things for your time to get that day off. This is a work balance. That's what people are looking for today. And that thing changed over time. And that's how we have to understand what motivates them to keep moving. Sometimes money, next month can be a day off. We can use this as a career plan. So if you wanna give them you know, the next level of their job, you can also use our you know, platform to do that. This is how we make money. We charge $99 a month for seven users. And also we have a affiliate program for our sales uh, rep. We're starting very small, only targeting for small business between 50 to 11 employees right now in technology. And if we get 2% of that market, it can generate us $3.3 million a year. But we have a huge market up there. Only technology companies for 50 to uh, 500 employees can generate us $324 million a year. Only talking about technology. But what we are building here is agnostic. We are already testing this in construction, for example, because they need to deliver things on time. But we don't want to give the company another platform for them to manage. We are building an infrastructure. So we already create our plugin with Jira, so the company don't change the way they work today. They just connected with us. And we want to do that for all the platforms, like Salesforce, I tried Trello, Azana, Monday, Pickup, because the entire company can be measured their performance. That's why we're doing here in response. And this is the best thing about the task, the results. That's what we sell for the companies. The first report here tells us uh, the team performance report. I want the team to be a high performance team. And how can I do that? That's when the task also comes to help them achieve that goal. And here you can see the best talent in a company, that guy that you can never lose it. If you lose that guy, trust me, your company is going to be in a very big trouble with that. Another report we had, the return on the investment. If you decided to pay 
people want money, you are saving days from that because the deliver needs free your time. And that is money. Okay, you need to pay that money, you save time from them, they can help with something inside your company. And then you see here the return of the investment. This is one example of one of our customers. Uh, he just delivered the project five days ahead of schedule. Okay, it was amazing because it was the first time he, he did that and saved 26% budget using our solution. We have a very strong competitors up there, okay, but we're doing things different. The first thing is we wanna build an infrastructure. Even then can use us behind the scene if they want to. Okay, the second one is we're measuring performance. Connect that with the company goals. It's not a subjective way to measure someone. You know, they're delivering things, you are measuring what they're doing. Okay, and most important, we are building this, we are building this on the blockchain. Why? Because you can never manipulate the data. I see a lot of companies manipulating data and manipulating things when you save on the blockchain. It can never happen. Okay, and we are also creating a public track record for those employees. Instead of they go to LinkedIn and tell whatever they want, they can prove how they were working performance in that company using the blockchain behind the scene. But people don't need to worry about that because we handle everything so people don't even know that there is blockchain behind. This is me, Rodrigo, and Felipe. Uh, I ran around five startups with uh, two exits, so I understand how that thing, how the game works. And most important, I tried more than 100 solutions in my entire career, and none of them worked the way I, I wish to keep my employees happy and motivated, and I deliver things on time. Okay, this is also uh, Felipe. Uh, this guy, I'm a CEO and CTO. Okay, pretty much everything we built here, I was the one who broke the codes and everything. And this is what we are uh, right now. You know, uh, everything we did so far was with our own money, but now it's, it's time for us to scale up. Okay, that's why we are here. I want to show you uh, what we have and what we're asking for. We have a very detailed business plan already, explaining how that money is going to be used and how we're going to achieve uh, those milestones. Uh, this is pretty much our roadmap that we have. You know, for the hiring more people to work, creating the integrations, uh, the smart contract, and also we are starting to test our AI, you know, to help the, the employees to develop their data. If they want to achieve the high performance, they need to develop their data. And that's when we, we enter here with that, the AI to connect the experience, what they need to do and what the company wants from them to help them to develop their data. Um, that's it. And before before um, before I finish here, I just want to say something to you. If you're an investor, you put money in a company, okay, the company is there, we can help them achieve their goal. But most important, next time you invest in a company, we can require deep tax to be part of that investment because we want to guarantee that they're going to achieve their goals and you as an investor will receive your investment back. Thank you very much. Take questions from the audience. Uh, remember, our new goal for the new year is don't just a great presentation. Actually, be specific about what was good in the presentation or what was missing, how he can improve. We want to make this as constructive as possible. Jim, you're first. Thank you, sir. So, Rodrigo, one of the things I would suggest, I love what you're doing. I think you're spot on track. Um, but one of the things, having raised funds and helped raise funds for a number of startups and other companies, one of the things that you really need to do is more target what you want. Come in with a, hey, um, if we can get 2% of the market, this is what we're looking at. You need to be more specific instead of a general number. That kind of creates a lot of red flags for Congress when you look at that. Yeah, so that you. would be my reference. Thank you. So I, I know you said you're looking to have this implemented as like plug into other systems. Um, I, I think maybe I just didn't hear you clearly. Uh, what what ones are you already ready to plug into? And and um, I saw the list of the ones you're trying to get to in the future. And and how many uh, companies are you working with right now as far as like clients? Uh, 
Yes, very. Uh, we are just working with uh, Jira right now because we are targeting technology company and that's the most used it tool, you know, that one. Uh, we had 50 users, you know, two pay users. The company is just launched four months ago. You know, we already was going to one directly with Pivot, go to the other one because we're learning fast with the users, you know, and that's, that's what we had. What was the other question? Have no, I'm good. Hey, good. Hey, Rodrigo. Um, real quick, so if you could elaborate a little more on the traction that you have, um, you said you do have some customers at one company with how many people and what that's what that experience is going like. You said you had the one that um, they were five days early, and then uh, how much are you raising? Uh, I'm raising one point one million. Are you doing that on a safe note? Yes, and safe. And then give about your traction a little bit. I'm sorry, I kind of missed a little bit of it. So that, that graph that you showed, how far were you down that path? Uh, we're just at the beginning, since we have about four months of the company. You know, our target is to get the first uh, 100 users you know, in the platform. We are already negotiating with a company that has 5,000 users, you know, and they pretty much work as a private company base. So we're making a test in that one. If that works, we're going to implement the test in the company for their future projects. So are you, how are you requiring you're going direct outreach? Yeah. If I may, I, oh, somebody else. Okay, go ahead, I'll do it. Um, my question is, um, I have two questions. The first one is regarding the, uh, how, can you give me an example of how you measure the performance of a developer in a certain software development company, particularly AI and full stack development, for example? In this, uh, and the second question what blockchain platform are you using? Ethereum or which one? Vibration. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I can give an example of what happened with me. Okay, I just got a project uh, a month ago for a guy in uh, California, and I have a very good developer. This guy was one of the best I ever met, but there's a problem never delivers nothing on time, you know. And I came to him with that project and say, You want to work with me on that one? You say, yes, okay, how much you want for that? Say, okay, I want an X amount, great. I want to detect, I put a goal, very clear, so what they need to deliver, and put 20% instantly on that goal, okay? Because I know some guys are able to deliver things real time, but they don't have any reason to do that. Because they will get nothing, you know, at the end if they do that. What we're trying to do here is make people be aware of what would make that guy to do it? Yeah. And then we apply, and then we start to measure the performance, how they're performing the company, how we can push them a little bit more. And this guy, he delivered every day, he was calling in the morning <laughs> to not miss that deadline. So he changed it because I was giving him what he wanted even more. And they got everything delivered to your time, five days to your time, you know, with extra money. <clears throat> and for the uh, blockchain, they're using Polygon. Okay. Yeah, Polygon blockchain. You know, I started to build that on Ethereum, but it was so expensive. You know, and we're using Polygon because it's more decentralized as the other ones. You know, and the gas fee is a little cheap, but the user don't need to know about this because we handle all the costs for the blockchain. So uh, to to follow up on what um, Jim was talking about. With regard to the market, so you're already in Jira, which is heavy on the developer side, both game development, software development. So I would focus on the, that one or two target markets, right? And you know, tell investors that you want to get 10% or 15% of that market, you know, within. But then again, you are you are are you nationwide yet or? No, not yet. I'm starting here. You're not. Okay. So then, then tell them you want, you know, the first, the, one of your first milestones then is going to be to get 5% of the Orlando market <laughs> software development, of which there's billions of dollars being done right now. So that right then and there is going to be enough uh, to get you going. Um, and then on the competition thing, what's more important to investors now is not seeing a table, so to speak, but they like to see like a quadrant of the two most important things that you use to differentiate yourself from everybody else. 
Okay. And, it, and it's it's more, you know, improved stuff, but that's what they like. You know. No, it, it is not. And just plays along with sort of the ads. Yeah. I didn't have time to change the presentation, no, but yeah, before that, as, as soon as I sent him the presentation, yeah, exactly like. Right. Okay. And, and, and sorry to make a shameless plug, but with Entrepreneur Partner with Oracle, and we're doing a presentation with NVIDIA on AI today at noon. I've been here. Okay. <laughs> so, do you have you already RSVP? Yes. Okay. Thanks, thanks for you. <laughs> All right. I saw your and no problem. Be there. Um, Sean is next. Sean is next. Thank you very much. This is fantastic. Happy employees, be a happy customer, and a successful business that was started by. Founder of Southwest Airlines. The best company is Costco. Check it out. Nobody leaves Costco. I call the Roach Hotel. You get in, you don't leave. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> the most innovative company in the world. Another one is IKEA. They're all like that. So I'm glad you are working with uh, Salesforce. Up, up, uh, with the up, 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 uh, that's one of the best ones. So I don't think you will have any issue with the money. What you need is the top guy, the should be the visionary. You should be talking to nothing but nobody but the CEO. Everybody watches him. He may say he or she may say anything else, but they watch what they do. So you want to go CEO. The success of the great success is the best. Actually, for a long time, it will be very good. This is the future, whether we like it or not. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. We have anyway. Any questions back here? Yeah, yeah, thank you. We really appreciate it. You might have already covered this when I stepped out, but this how do you combat the idea from executives and decision makers who believe? But they want people on site between eight and five, and they don't care about the result. They care about the time spent in the seat. How do you convince those people that this will help them? Yeah, this that's kind of difficult to change that kind of culture, you know, to shift. People should focus on the outcome. That's what I believe. That's what happened with me. You know, the results. I I, I don't care if they spend like two hours a day or 10 hours a day, if they give what the company needs, that's for you is more important because they want to be happy to do that. You know, this is a kind of something that we need to change that might, it's not easy, okay? Because companies have, should have a very clear goal. You know, especially today because people work remotely, they're not that close to you, you know, and you don't know what they are doing. They're trying to do a lot of things to keep people in front of the computer, but it doesn't mean that they're going you know, to give you what you need. So this is kind of the challenge that we have, and that's why we are not targeting every market up there. We are targeting marketing that is already with that mindset, but they don't have nothing to you know, keep measuring if the people are doing the way you know, they want to go. And it's very important what I say because what happened is when at a C level, you work like 10 people with you, you know everybody, you know. But when it starts to grow, you don't know who is there and are working. So there's a huge disconnection. You cannot pass it through them clear message of what this guy is here for, why we build this company, what problem we're solving, what the customers are here to tell them about us. You know, and this is what we want to do, like get that you know communication going through for everyone in the company on a daily basis. You know, not wait for three months for the results to come. I want to see people you know giving uh, uh, the, the things moving in the company. Was a good question. All right, and then that was the question. But then I'll ask the final question too. What can we as a community do for you? Uh, I'm in the process of fundraising right now, and we're starting with <laughs> connection. You know, because we want to work closely with the companies who's using the tech. Okay, me as a founder, I'm going to be a hundred percent involved for any company that is joined because we're learning a lot. You know how to improve and what really. Uh, the true value we're giving to the companies. That's why I'm here for, for the connections and for Congress. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
All right, next up. Bill Carson has David Axel. This is really one of those. The company I work for, obviously, Data Axel, is 51 years old this year. And we started off pretty much as a list marketing company. If you think about back in 1972, where you would get business data, other than maybe a Dun & Bradstreet, where? Was it Dexter or Dextro? That, 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 that was one, yeah. yes. And you think of other places where anyone, and oftentimes people had these resources, in their home, encyclopedia, phone books, exactly. So our founder had phone books sent from all over the company and Ma Bell would do that at their expense. And we hired people to do data entry and that's really how we got our beginnings in the business. So since then we've, we've partnered with a lot of companies, we've bought some companies, uh, we have relationship, we have a license agreement with the United States Postal Service's national change of address. So we can learn about people and or businesses that have moved. And so we're constantly updating our database, which is made available through your Orange County Public Library. So with that library card, you can access and let me, I hate to turn away from you, but let me, uh, show you the various modules that are made available through the library. Oops, and when you know what I went to. You know, I was the last of six children born, so I was never accused of being quiet. Uh, so with the database, we have our U.S. business database. We know that a lot of entrepreneurs use that to look at their competition, to identify potential customers, to look at the various information about demographics in your particular area. And this is anywhere in the United States. So it doesn't have to be focused just on Orlando. You can be looking at, at entities in any given city or state uh, in the US. So, and we can search it a variety of ways. I'll show you some information on that. We do have historical business information and it dates back to 1997. That's when we started keeping track of that data. So we're updating that monthly with that information that we've already verified through our call verification process with businesses that we do once a year. So we're updating that monthly. We have our new business filings. Those are coming from three different sources. Secretary of State office feeds that we get weekly. We also get them from utility hookups, as well as that postal processing that I mentioned. So when mail starts to go to that physical location for that, for that new business. We uh, update that weekly. Those will remain in there for one year. And we typically are able to get those call verified within 30 to 45 days. And then we'll push a brand new record into the U.S. new business database with that information. We do have healthcare information and we have those doctors and dentists, and et cetera, in our business database as well. The difference between the healthcare and the U.S. business database is the healthcare is going to have information about that doctor. Where did they graduate from school? What year? What's their medical specialty? Do they accept new patients? Do they accept Medicare, Medicaid? That kind of information. So you can certainly use that. I have a nephew that lives in Denver, Colorado, and he has a business that he's had for probably 15 to 20 years now. He has a, uh, how, what does he refer to himself as? A, uh, he takes the doctor's notes and it's, it's all been, Right. Yeah, yes, exactly. And then they transcribe all of that information so it's ready to go for that patient's report. 
Uh, so he uses that to get a hold of who are the decision makers in a doctor's office. It's not the doctor, it's the office. Office manager, exactly. So he uses the database to identify that office manager. We have standard white pages, which is just that, what you would see when you open up the white pages. But it, we did add, because we've got the Census Bureau uh, information, so we've added estimated home income and home value based on that block group and census tract that those people are in. So you can use that to identify those people that you might want to reach out to based on a product or service you might, might want to offer. We have consumer lifestyles. So that data is coming to us through surveys that people have completed, for example. Because I travel so frequently, I'm constantly being asked for a survey from the airlines, from the car rental companies, the hotels, the restaurants, so we're capturing that information from surveys, from magazines people might be having sent to their home, credit card processors. Uh, so as we capture that, we're trying to marry that back to that address that they live at. So if you were looking at, let's say, maybe you have a travel business, you could go into the consumer lifestyles database and identify those people that enjoy travel. Right? Wow, what a concept. Then you could obviously do some outreach with those folks. And then we have our new leaders, new homeowners. I can't emphasize enough the value of that module. You can go in and you can identify these people who have moved to this new address. So if we wanted to look at, for example, Winter Park and see how many people have come in from whatever distance you decide you want to start with. So if you didn't want to know about people who've moved from, say, within the community or within the county, but really, truly external to the area, you can go into the consumer brain of the new movers, new homeowners, and identify that. So lots of different uses. Let me give you a for example. And, and obviously, we do offer, and I would be remiss if I didn't do this, we do offer webinars on how to use the database, and I get very detailed in terms of some of the things that you can do with the database. So we offer those. We have information under the Learning Center about how to use the database. So certainly take advantage of the library resources as well. And let me do this for you. Let's just do this real quick. So I'll go into the U.S. Business Database. Whenever I'm in this quick search universe, I'm only looking at those call verified records that we have on those businesses. We also have a couple of other files that I could mention, and I'll do that here momentarily, but let's do this. I'll do Orlando. I can look at any city or state. And these are my verified records. So we have 75,000 plus verified records in Orlando. Well, it's one thing to say, gosh, you have that many records. It's another to know what kinds of businesses those are. So, oh, and I have to verify I'm human. Oh, no. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, it must be this one. Oh. And I just got new glasses too, right? It's like, whoa. And there it is again. Okay, so I'm human. I'm going to chart this. Is everybody familiar with SIC codes? Standard Industrial Classification Codes? Okay, so this is going to break them out by SIC codes. And we've enhanced those, by the way. When the federal government was using them, they were only a four-digit number at max length. We've made them a minimum of six and a maximum of nine. So you can get very specific. So here's my top seven SIC codes as it relates to the Orlando area. So physicians and surgeons are usually at the top of that list simply because they're all 1099 guys and gals. So we also have, as you can see, restaurants, attorneys, et cetera. So we give you that top seven, and I can get into any of those record counts that I would want to, to look at those types of businesses. But I can also, notice I do give you a full report. It's 158 pages in length, and it's all of those businesses based on those SIC codes. So if you need certain, somebody mentioned construction earlier. 
if I needed all the construction companies in Orlando, I could get to that universe just like that. All depends on what you might need to be able to do. So I have that. And let's do this. I'm going to go back to those results because I want to be sure to show you. This is, this is a really simple search. That's why they call it quick search, right? But I do have the ability in the advanced search universe to use these various filters. Hopefully it realizes I'm still human. There it is. Okay. I have all these various filters that I could, in fact, employ, depending, again, on how specific I needed to be. So if I just wanted to look up, Josh, you may remember this, if I just wanted to look up restaurants, for example, I could certainly do that. And find those restaurants in whatever geography. So I'll show you this real quick. Here's my all-inclusive for all restaurants. If you would like, you can get more specific and look at certain types of restaurants or even specific chain restaurants. So there's that nine digit. Let me show you this though. We'll look at all restaurants and we're gonna use my map tool for that. And I'm just gonna say, Orlando here real quick. So the system will take me right into that Orlando area. I could draw my own shape. I could use a true radius. I have some predetermined boundaries as large as the state, as narrow as a neighborhood. Let's look here at these zip codes. So there's the zip codes in the area. If I wanted to focus on that, I can select any zip code that is important to me, and then I can get the total number of records that apply to that particular area. So you can do that kind of a search. I'm gonna delete those guys real quick and show you if you wanted to draw your own shape, maybe you wanted to be on this, this side of four. You can decide to do that. It's a single click to begin it, a single click to change direction, and then you get to decide what it looks like ultimately. So in that shape, I have 324 restaurants in that area. If that's what I want, I can say done, view those results. And here's my list. This information can be downloaded if I would like to. All I have to do is select that box next to company name and select my download option. And then it will give me, if I'd like to make mailing labels, you can do that in comma delimited and then make your mailing labels, send that out. And, and we even give you the ability to tell the system only to give you those addresses that are highly deliverable. That's a new ad, by the way, Jane. So uh, I think that's a game changer because you're not going to necessarily end up with wasting that postal expense for that mail piece that ends up getting returned to you, right? So you could certainly do that if that were something you wanted to do. Uh, once I say I've, I've, I've got this, and let's say I'm just going to go with that summary, I can download those records. I can also email that information if I would like. And then I can get that output in Excel. So you can do so much with the database. I always share with libraries that sometimes the only limitation might be our imagination in terms of how we might bundle together the different filters that you might ultimately want to use. You could use sales volume, you could use number of employees, you could use type of business, you can use age of business, you can do all kinds of different selections, just depending on what it is that you'd like to do. Yes? It's great. Um, what I'm looking for is I want to find all the businesses Buy million sales for the owners over 60. Owners over 60? Yeah. I won't have an age of the owner. This is probably back the same thing. Sure. You could do that against a business age. Absolutely. Yes. I just won't have ages of, 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 of an owner. Yeah. 
You have a question over here? This is, this is great. I, I, I'll go ahead and warn you guys. Like, this is like one of those amazing tools that I've used. I probably live in this thing quite often. A couple times. Um, but one of the things that I, I was looking for that I, I don't think I found is yeah, so. so I know when I get the list, um, I want an email for the decision maker. Um, so I, I, I read the list, but I thought I saw a few. <laughs> the entire list didn't have um, all the emails, maybe out of 110. And mm -hmm. you select the option. I'm also on this list a lot, but you have to actually select it. Same thing with phone number. Another question. So, uh, I see that you guys have a web, um, and I see that you allow us to download. Is there any way that I could just dump the database if I wanted to parse it with something else myself? Yes. Show me the money. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we have, we have all the companies, right? We, we, we can give them a, a, an API feed, and they can go in and they can tell us, as we set up the contract, they can tell us, these are the elements that I would need as it might relate to businesses and or people. And then we'll open up that API feed with that number of records that would apply to your needs. And then you can go in and bring it all in house. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we do that a lot. Okay. Uh, this is the free version through the library. Okay. Yeah. Um, I used this last week. I created a list from Dr. Phillips, 20 mile radius, 5,000 restaurants, uh, and I made Sure, it included phone numbers. 3,000 of those listings actually have the decision maker's name and their phone number. Um, and we forwarded that on to a call center who's going to make calls on behalf of, of my company. And we're going to, that's our lead gen. Um, and it was free. The only thing I would say, it did take me like about two to three hours <laughs> to get all that downloaded and concatenated into one document. I guess that's part of the free thing. Right? Yep, that's it got, exactly it. Yeah. It does take a long time. So, budget is fine for it. Right. Uh, and the so far, the data is very good. I'll also add a question to Josh's comment. He is, when you're dealing with large numbers of records like this, don't get greedy. Like, oh, I can download how many thousands right away. Download it 200. And go after those and see what they say. See if they'll even talk with you. Exactly. If you've even got the right product for you. Uh, and then come back and download them more. I would also add that um, on this, I don't know what your target market typically is for data axle, but when you're trying to appeal to startups, the and I'm trying not to be presumptuous, but when you, when you appeal to startups, you really need to know the value of what, what you're presenting. Okay. So to a startup, the biggest problem is, is customer acquisition costs because they typically don't do their homework. So they're basically just throwing money at social media or wherever right. and seeing what sticks. Yep. And their customer acquisition cost is through the roof and then they fail and don't know why. So um, one thing that I like to consult with people is to, is to encourage them to be as detailed as possible with the data of their target market. So the smaller your target market, the more detailed you can be for that. And then when you use this information, you can really target them very well in your customer acquisition costs plummet. Okay. And then therefore you're 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 generating 10 times more business with one for the effort cost. Okay. So that's the value of what a system like this can provide. It's that whole smarter, not harder. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is very beautiful. Um, my, my question, I have a few questions. Um, the first one, how do you monetize this? Is the first question. The second question, uh, did you consider to integrate some AI systems or recommendation systems? Yes, for example, it's time consuming. Uh, I understand that this is free. 
with, uh, say, for example, if you connect here some AI APIs <clears throat> and say and let users to use AI, say, for example, just like Dali, uh, text to image. So you would, uh, you know, the AI would generate for your clients, your graphs, your charts, because that bar graph is <laughs> some sort of primitive. <laughs> yes. And you know, there are a bunch of tools like Tableau, you know, and Power BI, so that maybe your developers. Right. This is just a question. Did you yep. consider this? The other. So the third question is: <clears throat> there was a question regarding the uh, breaking your database. How do you track it? And the fourth question. I'm sorry. I'm very interested in this. So the fourth question is. How did you do this with the library? I mean, this integration, technically, how, how did this happen? So we created the database, and then the library provides us with a match load, match load related to the library card number. And that's what's authenticating the access to the database. So when you log in through the library, you're asked to put in that number, and that's what allows you to go in. Our, our database is very much closed ended on in terms of HDI. We don't have, there's no open window to our data. And we do that to protect it, right? Because we do have those folks that would like to be able to scrape our data and remove thousands of thousands of records, right? So we do that to protect that. We we mark it on the outside. I'm one of I'm, a, I'm one of the smallest divisions within the company. Uh, we have a great number of, of employees that are out of Omaha and other locations across the United States that work with Fortune 100 companies, obviously, and then those mid-sized markets as well, right? Those those slightly smaller companies. Uh, so the goal I have is to obviously market the benefits that you could take access or have access to through your public library getting this kind of information. In terms of it, AI, I don't think we're going to be uh, AI ready just yet. Uh, uh, and I do know that, so I work with every SBDC office in the state of Florida. I do know that they'll sometimes take our data and just take the raw records and then they'll import it into their own software in order to present certainly much more uh, attractive charts and, and, and images. Uh, with the data. The API documentation is on the library system or it's on your website? It's on, it's through our site. Okay. Yeah, it's something that we set up specifically based on customers' needs, which may include email addresses, right? Because we know that a lot of times businesses will need email addresses as well. Uh, we handle a lot of the marketing, uh, email marketing for large companies. Uh, Marriott, for example, we do a lot of their email marketing. So how much does it cost if if I just want to access data axle and I don't live in Orange County? Right. How much would it cost me to, to use it? You know, the I don't sell that side of the house. I don't do any of that type of work. You can go right to our uh, dataaxle.com and learn about those kinds of structured costs. Because it's going to be based on what you think you're going to need to be able to get to in terms of records. How many records, how many reports do you want based on these various types of businesses? So it's all calculated on that. But it, now, is it any other library system? Like I'm in Seminole County, the Seminole County library system that I could access at, at that library? Yeah, you can you can access it through Seminole County. Yeah. Okay. Or Orange County. Yeah. How, how, many people, how many people don't live in Orange County? Jane, how much does it cost to get a library card from outside Orange County? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. The, yeah, the Orange County library system is huge. So, uh, so if you don't live in Orange County, under seventy-five bucks versus hundreds of dollars. Oh yes. Oh yes. Hundreds of dollars a year. 175 bucks and a trip to the Orange County Library, and you might even get to see Jim. And it's cheaper than Oh, <laughs> yeah, one more question here. One more question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, to 
asking you trying to answer that question already, but I'm going to ask it anyway. If I have chat GPT, why can't I put a prompt and have conversations with the get exactly what I'm doing? Like he asked the question earlier. I think <laughs> like targeting exactly who you want, what you want. Your customer acquisition cost will go to zero. That's the best way to run a business. You should provide that capability if you don't have it. That's how you can print money. There are. So earlier this summer, I was out in Colorado and they have these critters uh, that, that come up and they build these dens and they come up and they, they uh, not brown dogs, prairie, prairie dogs. Yeah. So every prairie dog hole isn't the same. So everybody's need for data isn't the same. So we customize it. That's why we're involved with that individual uh, with another human, right? Because we want to make certain that what you need, what you think you need, is really what you need, right? That's, that's, a, that's a role of a prompting. How good you are in prompting, asking the right question, right? Yeah, right but that's how it works out. And you have the system. You guys have to get to that. Are you suggesting I you quit my job? <laughs> you can use Chat GTP to for offer you the right prompts, questions to ask yeah, to right. do your searches. Yeah. So, final question: is What else can we as communities get your library card? <laughs> get your library card. Yes, because obviously our success is based on the library's success of the use of any of their products, right? Whether it's a book or something online, it's about using that product. So ours is- a Who has a library card? Please. Dun, dun, dun. Oh. <laughs> Sweet. But again, who's gonna get a library card? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we know who you are. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. I'm sure people are going to have questions. We heard from Bill. Next week, oh, this shouldn't be TBD. Uh, I forgot to change that. Next week, we are going to have seven of our board members do six minutes on things that you need to know for your business in 2024. This is not the basic stuff like, should I have an LLC? This is things like, how do you do pillar-based content marketing to win search? That'll be my topic. Um, and so you don't want to miss that. Of, of all the ones that uh, that we have done in this year, this is going to be, I think, uh, the most action-packed uh, with the most actionable items that we will have all year. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, there was no chat, so on our, uh, for our Zoomers, there's nothing to download. Uh, please join us on meetup.com if you haven't already. That's where we post announcements uh, for every meeting. And then we also have our Facebook page. Uh, make sure you connect with somebody that you met here today. This is how we build our community. Uh, that you, you meet somebody here today and you go for coffee either up the road to Donut Central or right over here to the New General, which has some really good iced lattes, if, if that's your thing. Uh, but just meet, get to know one another, or Barney's, um, get to know one another, build those relationships. These are the ways that you find the people who help you grow your business, who become referral sources, uh, they become resources, uh, and they become your friends. And this is how we build such a wonderful community that I'm proud to be a part of. So. Uh, don't forget your parking pass. It's on the coffee station. And thank you very much. We will see you all next week.